December 17th, 1903, Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Witnesses gather to watch the final test of a revolutionary new flying machine invented by brothers Wilbur and Orville Wright. Orville took his position in the cradle. Wilbur was on the right wing. They started the engine. And lo and behold, 40 feet down the rail, the aircraft lifts up. They flew 120 feet in 12 seconds. 12 seconds that changed the history of mankind forever. The successful test of the Wright Brothers flying machine was a watershed moment in human history. The 12-second flight proved that sustained, controlled, powered flight was, in fact, possible. For the Wright Brothers, this achievement was the fulfillment of a childhood dream. One of the most extraordinary things about the Wrights is the fact that they were two ordinary people from a middle-class family in Ohio. Their father was a bishop, and he was a voracious reader. And so there were books in the Wright household of all sorts. Their mother was a sort of mechanical whiz. She loved fixing things, building them toys. And so they got a sort of taste from her, a kind of mechanical taste. The story of the Wright brothers actually started 25 years before Kitty Hawk, when they were seven and 11 years old when their father brought home the toy flying machine built by a Frenchman, Alfonso Pinot. This was powered by force of a twisted rubber band, and that really amazed the Wright brothers because they had never seen a toy flying machine in their lives. Being curious, they played with it, and they broke it, but they didn't just throw it away. First, they repaired it, but then they started to reproduce the toy themselves. The Wrights owned the Wright Cycle Company in, uh, in Dayton, Ohio, and they were bicycle salesmen uh, and, and repairmen. They were always curious, technically minded, motivated young people who built a bicycle shop and made a profit in order to put money into test flights. At one point, Wilbur says the problem of flight is actually a thousand problems. First, you have to raise the money to solve the problem. Well, that's a very different disposition than the technical mind who can figure out the, uh, the equations for air pressure and lift and these sorts of things. In 1899, the Wright brothers performed their first flight experiment by testing a rudimentary kite flyer. They also looked to nature for clues on how to solve the problem of powered flight. They saw all these examples in nature of flight, the butterfly, the dragonflies, the buzzards and vultures, and they found that there were two methods of flight, the fast wing beaters and then the soaring bird. They patterned their machine after a particular bird, the turkey vulture, which was a very good soaring bird. They would read books about animal locomotion and look at birds' wings and people were like, what are those guys doing? But they were looking at the way the birds twist their wings. Because neither of them went to college, the Wrights benefited from breaking the chains that might have otherwise have bound their minds. The Wright brothers took these unconventional observations of animals flying in nature and applied them to their flight experiments. This innovative approach would prove to be a stroke of genius. The major breakthrough that the Wright brothers discovered was the curvature of the wing has a dramatic effect on the ability to produce lift. Wilbur one day was in the bicycle shop and he held a bicycle inner tube box. And as he twisted the ends of the box, he had an aha moment and realized that the box ends move very much like the wingtips of the birds. He integrated that idea into what he called wing warping in the wing design that we see on the 1903 Wright Flyer. The Wright brothers always said, when people asked them, what got you interested in flight? What made it such that you wanted to solve the problem of flight? Why did you persevere through all your failures? They would say, we did it for fun. We were having fun. 
And then they would say we were frustrated that a lot of smart people thought flight should work. And it didn't work. And we wanted to know why, and we wanted to fix it. The Wright brothers' incredible innovations allowed them to solve the centuries-old mystery of powered flight. In fact, so much of what we take for granted today, from commercial airlines, space shuttles, can be traced back to these two ordinary brothers and their unlikely stroke of genius. There were many people before the Wrights who attempted to create flying machines. You can think about people like Leonardo da Vinci. You can think about Edison, who was interested in the problem, Alexander Graham Bell. The genius of the Wright brothers is what they had was a gumption to say, why not us? 